I'm Craig Phipps, and this is the IBM Tririga 3.7 Module Level Assignments presentation. So why are we making these changes? Well, currently the Tririga platform uses a single table called the IBS Spec Assignments Table to track all record associations in the system. This means that any operation that requires associated record data must join to this table, both from and to the record in question. Associated record data is an integral part of Tririga. Take, for example, a lease record, which is a fundamental Tririga functionality. In order for that lease to function, it has to have associations to tons of different types of data. The tenant record, the landlord record, the building that's being rented, payment line items, clauses, amendments, are all part of making that lease function the way we want it to. And it can account for literally hundreds or even thousands of record associations just for that single entity. On some customer environments, this can mean joining to a table with hundreds of millions or even billions of rows. This can lead to significant performance degradation and contention and can also affect scalability. So what's the goal? Well, to improve that performance and lessen the database contention. And one way to go about doing that is to use smaller tables than the massive IBS spec assignment table that we're currently using. So the solution was to come up with module level assignments as opposed to this master assignment level that was across the entire Tririga system. So what we did was we split that IBS spec assignments table into per module association tables. So if your Tririga installation has 100 different modules, you'll have 100 different tables managing those associations and relationships, which means that for any given query or operation against that table, you should see a better performance than against its counterpart with the larger single table on the older Tririga instances. So how does the design for this new module level assignment structure look like? Well, the first thing we wanted to do is be able to provide a conversion tool that would allow us to split that big IBS spec assignments table into smaller per module association tables. Uh, we wanted to handle this in the platform, but in order to do that, we had to implement the capability to handle all create, update, and delete operations against that per module association table structure. And for the most part, we tackled almost all of the read operations as well, but there'll be a few that we'll uh, continue to address over time. In the meantime, we have an all module union view that replicates that original IBS spec assignments table. That'll handle those outstanding read operations that are still reliant on the old structure. Conversion to the module level assignments, well, for a 3.7 release, it is optional. You don't have to take it. In fact, you have to take obvious steps to, to do that. And once you have done it, it's really not reversible. So what that means is we definitely want to take a backup of our existing system before we run the conversion tool on our database. That way, if we find out there's any issues with it or we decide that we don't want to implement it at this time, we can always roll back to our backup without any harm. And finally, the impact on the end user should be transparent. Your end users shouldn't see any difference in the operations that they're performing on a day-to-day -day basis. Hopefully they'll be faster, and hopefully it'll be more scalable so that more users can operate in the system at the same time, but the uh, actual experience should be the same. What are the known limitations for the 3.7 release? Well, we've only supported IBM DB2 and Oracle databases for this initial release. Microsoft SQL Server will be supported in a future release for module level assignments. Several BERT reports should be updated on site to use module level tables for performance reasons. By that I mean any BERT report that calls on the IBS spec assignments table as part of its uh, filtering should be updated to use the module level counterpart for the specific objects that it's returning. Reverse association flags, that is on association filters in the report manager are not going to be supported by this configuration and will be ignored. For the most part, most of our customer bases have already removed all reverse association flags on association filters, and we've stopped shipping any queries or reports that require them. Uh, additionally, we've also prevented the creation of new ones uh, for several releases now. Uh, and again, this is because of performance-related issues. 
So just to be clear, we still have forward and reverse associations at the record level. We just can't use the reverse association filtering that was allowed in many, many, many releases ago. Reverse associations as defined in the association manager are still supported, as I just indicated. And to help you identify any outstanding reverse association flags in use on customer reports in your organization's environments, we've added an audit query number Q13A in the admin console on the database query tool to help you identify which queries in your system may be taking advantage of that older reverse association flag. And once again, once it's converted, there's no reversal. And I'm trying to emphasize that just so that everybody knows that the backup part of this process is of utmost importance to ensure that we can roll back in case there's any issues. So you're excited about the new structure and you want to know how to enable the module level assignments? Well, the first step is going to be upgrading to the Tririga Platform 3.7 version. Or you can also use a clean install for 3.7. If you have done an upgrade from an existing Tririga system, make sure to perform your normal upgrade regression testing. We want to make sure that the applications behave as expected prior to starting the conversion process so that if there's any differences in behavior, we can identify if it's due to the upgrade process or if it's due to the conversion process. Then, once that's complete, we'll want to use the converter to migrate that IBS spec assignment table into smaller module level assignment tables. We can find the converter inside of our installation directory, under the tools directory, and finally under the MLA converter directory. You'll also find when you're in that directory, there's also a readme file that is worth going through and looking at some of the highlights for how to in more detail, in addition to the documentation that's provided. Conversion time, well, it really depends on a lot of factors, but we found that the size of the IBS spec assignments table, the database server capabilities, the chunk size, which is a variable that you can control, or you can just accept the default, and the number of modules had the most significant impact on how quickly or how slowly the conversions occurred. Okay, before you run out to do your conversion, let's talk through a few things you want to do before you actually start your conversion. Some of these may sound a little familiar. The first is review the readme file. As I just mentioned on the last slide, there's a readme file in your installation directory, under the tools directory, under the MLA converter directory, that gives you some really handy information on the process of the conversion that you're about to partake in. The second thing is to make sure to take a full backup of your database. Now, I, I know it may sound like a broken record here, and this is something that you're probably already doing as part of your best practices and your procedures within your organizations, but I can't remind you enough just to make sure that you take a backup so that you have the opportunity to roll it back if you do encounter any issues. Do not use this in production until you verify your data will convert by testing on a backup and in lower test environments. Again, this is probably best practice for all of our organizations or customers that are already working within Tririga, but we want to remind you in this particular case just because those best practices can save you a lot of headache later if there are any issues. The next section on this slide kind of talks about chunk size. So I mentioned it briefly earlier, but basically, chunk size determines how much is moved from the IBS spec tables into the new module level tables at one time. By default, it's going to move 100 million rows at one time. If you update the environment properties for isa.chunk.size to zero, the converter takes that as no chunking is going to be committed, and it will move all of the records for that module at one time. If you wanted to, for instance, move 50 million at a time, then you would use the below SQL statement in order to go ahead and implement that. Now, it's good to find a balance because if you do no chunking, it's actually going to be faster. However, if you do chunking, you can kind of watch the progress as it's going. You can tail the log, which we'll show in a moment. And as you're tailing that log, you can see each chunk being written into the new module level assignment table so you can kind of monitor the process a little bit easier. So that's something that you can kind of determine and maybe once you test it on your lower environment, you'll know whether uh, chunking is something that you require or not based on how quickly the conversion takes place. Okay, after the conversion, 
if you weren't already tailing that MLA conversion log, go ahead and at least open it up to confirm there was a successful conversion. You can go ahead and glance through it and make sure that there's nothing that jumps out at you as something that requires investigation. Next, as with any upgrade, we would want to start the application servers, again, one at a time. Then we'll want to perform your normal upgrade regression testing. And I know we've already done that once, but again, we want to go ahead and split the process between the upgrade and the converter so that any changes of behavior can be pinpointed to one of those two for further investigation. And again, we're just trying to make sure that all the applications behave as they're expected. Finally, we want to review any non-Tririga SQL, custom BERT reports or integrations that may access the IBS spec assignments table. Update to use the appropriate module level table. So, for instance, the Try People module is created as the MA Try People table for purposes of tracking the IBS spec assignments. We can use the IBS spec assignment view, but we're probably not going to find the performance is good for using the view as opposed to those specific MA tables. Let's go ahead and take a look at what a conversion looks like. I'll go ahead and use a Windows version on a clean database, so it'll be pretty quick. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the demo install directory, and as I mentioned, this is a Windows clean environment. Underneath the install directory, there's a tools directory, and then another subdirectory underneath that called MLA converter, and that's where we're going to find what we're looking for in this case. Uh, we're going to find these two files. The first file is the README that I mentioned before. A lot of the information we've kind of covered in this video, but it's a really good review before you're uh, actually doing the converter yourself to re review that. Uh, and then the other item is the actual converter itself. So before we do that, let's take a quick peek at the README. Let me go ahead and uh, open that with Notepad++ and make it a little easier to read. Um, but you can see it mentions prerequisites and it's got some warnings and import information and then kind of talks through, you know, preparing for the conversion, um, what to expect, you know, when you're running the converter and then after the converter finishes. So again, a lot of the same information I've covered in this video, but uh, here is a quick reference for you right next to the converter for your review right before you commence the conversion. So uh, let's go ahead and run the converter. I'll launch that. I'll just click through yes. Uh, it uses the same install anywhere uh, product that the regular Windows installer uses. So you're probably familiar with that if you've been doing your installations. Um, you can see here it's just a welcome page with some basic information about what it's supposed to do. I'm just going to click next through there. Uh, the first thing it's asking us is, have we taken a, a database backup? And this is just a reminder of uh, the importance of taking that, that database backup so we can roll back if there's any issues. Not that we anticipate any, but um, just as a precaution. So I'm going to say, yes, I have, and click yes. Um, here's just, a, again, some information about uh, expectations. You know, how long is it going to take or how long could it take uh, once the conversion is complete, you know, restarting them one at a time. So a lot of the same stuff that I've talked to you before. Um, an important reminder in here is just saying, hey, if, you, if the conversion fails, you know, review the logs, address any reported issues, and then you can try to run the converter again. So nothing, nothing surprising there. In addition, there was some additional checks that kind of are going on in the background. Uh, it checks to make sure that the application server is not actually hooked up to the database at the time. Um, additionally, you want to make sure that any other connections to that database are also severed. So things like uh, SQL Developer or Data Studio, uh, you want to go ahead and terminate those sessions as well so that there's no connections to the database when you're actually doing the conversion itself. And I'll go ahead and click Next. Um, it tells me that it's ready to, to start on this you know particular database and it gives me you know the location of that database that I'm that I'm looking at um, you know where can I monitor it and it basically gives me the path to the MLA converter where I launched this from and then underneath that there's going to be a new directory called logs and you can see it's actually already over there and then I could just click next and then if it fails again review it and restart it so we'll go ahead and start the install process here and um, let's see if I can get over here to the logs in time here's the the MLA uh, log conversion log, and you can see it's just kind of running through that here. Let's see if I can get more of that into the screen. Um, again, since this is a clean install, this should this should happen pretty quickly. 
Um, but you can see it's telling me as it's copying the files and creating indexes and, and giving us updates on each of those. And if the size of a module is large enough, you'll see that it actually will do multiple batches. And in most of these cases, since it's a clean database, you're seeing just copied one batch for each of them. And then uh, let me pull it up a little bit here. You can't quite see it on the screen right now, but at the end of this, you can see that it said there was a successful conversion to the module level assignments and that it took 34 seconds. Um, and you can see that, you know, there's no indication of any abnormal activity through here. Um, this is just, you know, basically creating the tables, copying the rows, and then creating the indexes against those. Um, so again, you know, we would just review, go through here and make sure that nothing jumped out at us. Um, there are some instances where uh, a particular module may be treated differently, and it'll explain that. For example, for example, if there's no business or base business object, um, it won't actually create the MA table at the time, but it'll talk through how that would be handled. Um, so again, just straightforward information, and what we're looking for is that successful conversion at the end, and when we see that, then, then we're in good shape. Uh, before I uh, head back to the slide slides, let me click uh, pull this back up, and you can see here it says congratulations, the module level assignments conversion has succeeded. Uh, we just reviewed the log, so we see that that is consistent with what we're seeing, we're expecting, and we can say done. Okay, so we've just walked through a Windows conversion. Let's talk about a few key Linux conversion differences. Uh, the most important is before you actually run the converter, you want to go ahead and set your MLA conversion directory. It's a session parameter that will basically tell the Linux system where it should be doing the logging. So that'll help us for finding that MLA conversion log that we were referring to in our Windows example. There's a similar log that occurs or, or is logged in the Linux uh, process. And if we don't do this, it won't know where to put that. So uh, this is kind of important from that perspective. Um, if you end up running this more than once, uh, you'll need to set it each time if you've closed the session and restarted it because it's only a session parameter. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the second thing is uh, if you're running the conversion log, excuse me, if you're tracking the conversion log, you're tailing it like we did in Windows, You'll just want to make sure that you use a different session window for that uh, because the converter will be actively engaged or using the, the first session that you're working with. So no different than tailing the ant.log if you're doing a new installation or an upgrade process. You would just have to tail that in a separate session. So that concludes the presentation for the module level assignments tool. Uh, here are some quick reference materials that you may find useful, uh, specifically the Tririga best practices information. And we'll actually have a site soon for uh, the BERT report updates for those reports that currently use IBS spec assignments tables so that they won't have to rely on the view, uh, which would be a little slower moving forward. Uh, and again, that concludes this presentation.